In this video, we're going to walk through managing lists of choices in your app with both option sets and data types, and the differences between these two methods. This will help make sure you're being as strategic as possible in your data structure for both development organization and app performance. Stick around until the end because I want to make sure you avoid overcomplicating your data design. It's Gabby over at Coaching No Code Apps. We help non-technical entrepreneurs build custom apps so they can launch their app-based businesses or grow their existing businesses all without coding. Today, we're going to talk about working with lists of choices in your application. And you can do this through two different methods. You can use Bubble's option set functionality, which is specifically for working with lists of choices, or you can also use your normal data types. In fact, before option sets were even a feature in Bubble, the only way to manage predetermined list of choices, whether you as the app builder created those choices or your users generated the choices, they could only be managed through the database, okay? But now we have option sets and option sets come with a lot of great benefits. And it's important to understand when it's appropriate to use one over the other. Let's take a quick look at our example editor here so we can understand where these things happen in the application. So under the data tab of your editor, you have the data types sub tab and the option sets sub tab. Okay, we'll start with option sets. So you'll see on the left-hand side, I have a number of different option sets. These are separate lists of choices that I've created to use throughout the application. And more often than not, these are static lists of choices that I don't anticipate are going to change after I first create them. They're predetermined, the users have no control over them, and they're generally contained lists. They're smaller lists, right? We're not talking about hundreds and hundreds of options. So a good example of this, day of the week, right? We have seven choices, one choice for each day of the week that I've created for this specific option set. You can also see that this set has a number of different custom attributes. So I can save other information to each individual choice. So for example, if I open up the Sunday attribute, I can have a numerical uh, value attached to Sunday. So Sunday is zero, Monday is one, Tuesday is two, and so on. I can have a translation uh, for different languages for that uh, particular choice. And I would just go through each of the options to define the values of those attributes that I've created here. Now, not every option set needs to have custom attributes. That's if you want to get a little bit more custom with it. Let's take a look at another example here, driver status. So if I was building uh, like a ride share application, a driver can only be under one of these three statuses. They're either available to take a job or they're offline, right? They're not working or they're currently with a passenger. And that's pretty much it. No custom attributes necessary here. There's just these three easy choices. Here's another example, listing status, uh, very popular with any application that uh, where users are creating content that need to go through several steps before they're visible to the public or they have to go through reviews, right? So we have drafts, published, expired. Um, they can be archived or under review, um, rejected, right? Think of application statuses, submitted, withdrawn, um, accepted, right? Um, those are predetermined choices that you are baking into your application. There's many other use cases here, but I wanted to show you, uh, you know, this area is specifically for this. It's for managing a list of choices. Now, your data types can also do this. You can create a data type specifically for that set, okay? So for example, we have one here for category, uh, to categorize blog posts. And we can give the category a name, right? That's the equivalent of an option set choice. Every new choice is a different record, a different entry in the category table. Um, and if we need other information, so similar to the custom attributes that we saw here for the, um, the days of week, we can do the same thing for the data type. We simply create new fields. Okay, so you can get the same effect for both. But again, there are pros and cons to using one over the other, and that's what we're going to talk through next. So here we have a quick table that's going to break down the most important differences you need to understand uh, between data types and option sets when it comes to managing lists of choices. Again, remember, option sets are specifically for this, whereas data types can let you do this, but it's also the rest of your data structure. It's not just list of choices, it's everything else that you're saving to your database, okay? So let's take a look one by one through each of these pros and cons, the capabilities that uh, they have. The first one is the ability to create dynamic sets uh, and options within those sets. So the only way your users can create their own option sets and their choices is through the data types because you can set up workflows 
for them to enter in information and save them to a record in your database. Your users do not have the ability to create option sets or choices. They do not have the ability to edit those. That is a huge difference. So if you know that your list of choices should be customizable by your users, you need to work with the data sets. Option sets are not a capability for that. The next difference here is uh, custom attributes. Actually, both of them allow you to do that, as I mentioned before, right? With data types, you simply create more fields within the data within the uh, data type structure to record more property information for that individual entry. And then the option sets have custom attributes that you can add uh, as well. And they can accept uh, a variety of different format types, okay? Relationships is also something that you can do with both data types and option sets, but there are key differences in how you should approach uh, designing relationships between these things. Let's go back to our editor to take a quick look. So when it comes to relating records to one another, so records in your database, uh, there's nothing different that needs to happen here, right? You would create a field within the data structure to associate, to relate, right? There's a reference between one entry and either one or more other entries of the same type or of another type. And within the data types, you can relate them to a specific choice or even a list of choices from your option set. Let's go back to our driver data type, okay? So a driver can be under a specific status. So this field is actually referencing our driver status option set. And the value of this field would be one of those choices. Now take a look at this. You know, with all of your data structures, you can provide a default value if you want. That's an optional thing. Whenever the record is created, uh, you can provide a, a value there so that it starts off with that value so you don't have to build it into the workflow. And with option sets, you'll notice that bubble is displaying my choices that I created in the option set area. It's kind of baked into the editor, which makes it really nice and easy to work with. Now, you can also set this up as a list. Um, so for example, a driver has, uh, if they have a multiple car types that they drive, they have multiple vehicles, you could have a list of car types here. This is another option set with a few different choices, okay? So data types can relate, and, and oftentimes you're going to use it in this way, uh, to option set choices like this, okay? So you just create another field for it. Now, on the flip side, option sets, through their attributes, can also relate to other option sets. Um, for example, if we have a you know limited list of hobbies here, I could create an attribute, let's say called sub hobby uh, or maybe sub hobbies, right? One hobby can be broken down into subcategories. So this would be a list of other hobby records in my same um, option set list. So I would simply manage that in the custom attributes to relate one to another or one to many. So you can create relationships between option sets. What you cannot do in the option set is relate a choice to a record in your database, okay? Because that's not really how you want this to work. You look at this as like your catalog of items, right? This should not be unique to a user or unique to a specific record in your database. These are simply lists of choices. So if you need to relate a user or any of your custom records to a choice, you're gonna do that on the other side. Okay, you can get any kind of relationship you want, mixing and matching, matching both of these things. Just make sure that you structure it properly so that when you're relating a data type to an option set, you're actually doing it from this side. Okay, so those are the differences between the two, but you can do relationships on both ends. The next thing we're gonna look at is how data types and option sets are incorporated into your overall app architecture. So the first thing here is that data types are a part of your database structure, right? They create the tables. Option sets are not. Option sets are not a part of the database structure. You don't search through your option sets. You access them differently. Bubble actually bakes them into your editor in a different way. Uh, it's another, it's a separate uh, dynamic source that you can retrieve whenever you're designing your front end pages or creating workflows. Option sets are a part of your app structure. Uh, the data types, I mean, indirectly, they are a part of your app structure, right? They belong to your database, which is an element of your application. Uh, but we want to do, we, we do want to see these differences here because they lead to different ways of using and protecting uh, the content around them. So this is going to be my next point here. Data types can be protected by privacy rules because privacy rules only apply to your database, 
right? You create privacy rules per data type. So you don't want to store sensitive information directly to the option set choices. And you really shouldn't run into that situation. If you are trying to save sensitive information like passwords and usernames and things like that to your option sets, you're not using option sets correctly. Those should be stored in your data types within fields so that you can protect them with the privacy rules. Option sets should be more generic. They should be more static list of choices that um, can apply to really anybody. It can be accessible by anyone. Of course, you can create conditions and things like that um, to offer specific sets and choices, but there should not be sensitive information saved to your option sets. Um, also, because the option sets are a part of the overall app architecture, you have to deploy the application in order to publish any changes to live. So if you add new choices or if you create new sets or modify the sets in any way, you have to deploy them in order for those to be published to the live version of your application. Data types do not require deployment um, when it comes to um, editing your records. Of course, if you introduce a new field uh, or if you change the names of things uh, in the structure of the data type, so the, the label of the data type or the field names or the format of the fields, those do need a deployment, but the entries themselves, so the values, right? This is more dynamic, okay? Remember, um, data types allow you to create dynamic sets and options because your users can create those choices and create all of the values. So if those need to be edited, that does not require a deployment. A database change, a database entry change does not require deployment, which can come with a lot of benefits there. So over here, I have a list of use cases to help you understand when it's appropriate to use an option set. I would say a good rule of thumb is you want to have a good reason to use an option set. Don't just default it to it. Uh, don't just default to it just because it's a list of choices. Again, you can manage those in data types. So there's very specific uh, scenarios where you're going to get a lot of benefit out of it. There are some scenarios where you need to be careful. And then, of course, other scenarios where option sets are not a good way to go. So for really good, easy use cases, um, we're going to look on the left here. Uh, marital status, like I mentioned, publication status, right? Draft, archive, publish, user types, right? So if you have multiple user um, definitions, so if it's a marketplace, you've got buyers and sellers. So if you notice the common trend between those, these are very contained lists. There are only a few different choices um, and there are options that are not going to change, right? Once you set them up, they're pretty much going to be the same all the time and your users don't need to have control over these choices. Now, looking at this use cases where we want to be careful, right, this middle section here, categories, industries, countries, app pricing plans, these are all good use cases for option sets, but only if the list of choices is relatively small. Um, and for me, the rule of thumb is a couple dozen. Anything more than that, things get really cumbersome working with option sets in your editor. Uh, if you're going to have hundreds of categories uh, to offer your users in the application, go with the data type instead. It's much easier to work with um, because you have that app data view, which presents everything in the editor in a table format, um, and you can see it all. You can't actually see option set attributes in a table format like that, and let alone being able to edit in bulk. Okay, if you ever need to edit, you know, your list of choices in a mass bulk way, uh, data types are going to be the best way to do that. And then some use cases that you don't want to go with option set. Um, like I've mentioned before, anytime your users need to customize. So if there's custom team roles that they are in control of, custom departments that they're creating for their company, uh, you know, the, they can't create those in the option set. So it just immediately rules it out. There's really no way around that. Keywords and tags are, we see this come up a lot. Um, it, it's tempting to create these in the option sets, but these are items that can easily grow in size. Uh, especially if your users uh, need to be able to work with many other keywords and tags. And then the last one that I want to touch on, because we've seen it come up a lot with our own clients, is time slots. If you're working with any kind of booking functionality, scheduling, um, it can be tempting to create a list of time options, right? 1 p.m., 2.30, 4 p.m., right? At whatever interval and create a choice for every single one. The problem with that is that option set um, choice labels are not dates and times. They're not formatted as a date and time. So you can't really do uh, date math or time math with it. Uh, they're just text, right? So you can't really get a lot out of it. Now, of course, you can create custom attributes and kind of hack your way through it, but there's really no reason to do that. Just manage your time slots um, through a traditional data type structure. There's also a lot of great plugins out there to help you generate dates and times dynamically.
There are, of course, lots of other niche use cases around managing lists of choices in your bubble app. And if you want even more in-depth help while building your no-code app, head to coachingnocodeapps.com slash resources to take the full deep dive. Thanks so much for watching and we'll see you in the next one.